What's up guys? In today's video, we're talking about Subaru conversions and Vanigans. We're gonna talk about how much money it costs, why you would put that much work into an old van, and I'm gonna go over some of the things that I did for my van and just talk about some of the things you have to know. So first, you guys gotta think about how much you're gonna drive your van, how far you're gonna drive your van, and how reliable, how much money you wanna spend. You gotta think about what your van is gonna do and where it's gonna do it. If you're gonna stick around town and your van's just gonna be kinda like a daily, maybe little camp trips, you know, within a couple hours, be like a weekend warrior, even like a couple times out of the summer, you should probably keep the Volkswagen in there, keep the stock engine, they run good, they run for a long time, you just gotta keep up on the basic things, and there's a lot of info online on the Samba and on other forms. You can keep them things running good for a long time. They're super good running engines, and honestly, they're fine. They're good if you are just kinda camping around town, even if you're going like far drives, even across country. They're pretty decent. They are kind of old and they're getting to the point to where you're gonna have to start replacing electrical stuff, wires, sensors, and things like that. But overall, they're pretty good. If you're trying to drive, let's say to all 50 states, like I am, and you want something reliable, super reliable, you want something that you can get parts for at every auto parts store, you want something that you can go to the junkyard and get an engine from, something that's smooth running, that's quiet, that's just super state of the art, fuel injection, and just very modern, it's a modern like engine transplant that you're gonna be doing to your van, but that modern transplant is a transplant and it takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of, hours, a lot of hours researching online because not everything's covered and some things that are covered, you know how the internet is, it's just kinda, it's kinda sketchy sometimes and you have to do a lot of work. So if you're up for that and you're up for a super nice van, it also increases the value of your van if you have a nice Subaru conversion. So you'll kind of get some back out of it if you're planning on selling it eventually. So there is that. I mean, all your money isn't gonna be down the drain. There's several companies you can buy from. I know there's Small Car, they got a bunch of stuff. I think it's Kennedy, Kennedy adapter. Like they make adapter plates and stuff. And I think they also have like an engine cradle. It goes on the bottom of your engine, connects to the frame. So you can at least get it in to your uh, van again. There's Rocky Mountain Westy. You can also do a Bostig conversion, which is like a Ford engine. There's diesels, there's 1.8 T's. There's a lot of engines you can do. And you just have to kind of do your research and find out which one is right for you. I personally went with the Subaru conversion. I first went with the Rocky Mountain Westy kit, which includes a lot of the stuff. And it's a pretty complete kit minus the wiring diagram. The wiring diagram is a pretty big job. I did it myself. I'm pretty good at electrical stuff and have a lot of mechanical backgrounds. So I managed to tackle it myself. I went to a local junkyard, pulled out an ECU wiring harness, engine wiring harness, and all the other sensors that are involved. So I was able to get that running. It runs pretty good. There's still a little bit of a like hiccup every once in a while but I got it done. You can get them done, maybe six, 800 bucks. You can send your wiring harness out to um, some companies, I don't know which one exactly, but there are places that will finish your wiring harness and make it run and set up to lengths and everything for your van. And then all you do is plug and play. You get it in the mail, open it up, plug it in, done, which is sweet. I maybe should have done that, but I didn't. So, in the kit that I bought, I got the Rocky Mountain Westy kit, which they give you this book, and it's like a manual for the conversion kit that you bought. It comes with exhaust, the full, all the headers, the muffler, the tailpipe, comes with the adapter plate, flywheel, bolts, everything to bolt it up to the transmission, the Volkswagen transmission. You have to specify whether you have an automatic or a manual transmission because they're different torque converter versus like a flywheel setup. Um, so the axles are the same, all the shift linkage is the same. 
the mount on the front of the transmissions, that's all, it's all Volkswagen. Everything's Volkswagen it's there on the tra in the transmission. So they give you all the mounts for the exhaust. They give you the mounts for the engine, which is a new cross member bar that bolts to your frame, bolts to the engine and coolant pipes. They come with everything to route your coolant for the Subaru engine. They come with a intake. They come with a coolant bottle. They come with a reverse manifold, coolant manifold. Comes with a throttle cable, comes with all kinds of stuff. This guy is like checking me out hardcore. He just drove by a mean mugging me. I'm gonna open up my back hatch and show you guys my Subaru conversion, things I've changed and have made it really better, I think. So let's, uh, let's get to it. All right guys, so here's my engine. And this is the Rocky Mountain Westy kit that you can buy directly off their site. And it comes with pretty much everything here, all the intake. I ran my own Subaru box. This is from a later, uh, late 90s Impreza. I had to make a bracket that bolts to the frame back there, but I really like the stock intake box. It makes it look a little bit cleaner and it just looks more complete with that in there. It kind of looks factory. I do like their coolant bottle and their bracket that they have. It's powder coated and it's pretty much the stock Volkswagen uh, coolant bottle. I think it's an aftermarket one, but it's the same shape. So that looks very like super factory. It also uses the stock uh, level switch, level sensor in order for it to work on your dash. The exhaust that comes with the kit is super sweet and it's a very complete kit. This is actually not their muffler because I think their muffler is a little bit too loud. This is a stock replacement for the Volkswagen and they do come with a cat. It comes with all the headers and it's all stainless steel. So that's sweet. It won't rust out on you. It comes with all the adapter plate and comes with all the clutch stuff. Everything's included there. So there's the engine mount. It bolts right to where the original one does. There's a couple extra holes that you have to drill and there's that bushing and there's another bushing and it goes down that pipe right there goes to the stock Subaru engine mount and it wraps up the other side and connects just like it does right here. And that's, I think that's a super good idea and a super good like design. And it also has bushings, like I said, in there. So that provides another dampener from the engine to the body. So that's, I think that's pretty sweet. It also comes with the coolant stuff. That's a coolant pipe that's running from the water pump, which is back in there and it runs up here right to the hoses that go up to the radiator on the stock Volkswagen. So that's all complete. And yeah, the engine fits really good under here. There's also a bunch of different uh, oil pans you can get. I did get the small car oil pan, which is all aluminum and it has pretty good ground clearance, at least what factory is. It's not, I don't think you're losing any. And it's super strong cast aluminum. It's real thick, it's super beefy, and it doesn't leak whatsoever. So I kind of splurged on that, and that's also another thing that you can kind of decide on yourself because there's a lot of different companies that make oil pans for the Vandigan Subaru conversions. So I opted for the small car, which so far it's a very good choice, and I haven't had a problem with it. Here's a shot of the throttle cable. It's a little bit longer than the factory one, and it mounts on the stock Subaru bracket, comes around and it loops, it goes all the way up to the pedal. So that comes with the kit. Also this shield comes with the kit and that is a shield that blocks heat from this muffler, from the cat, and it protects the timing cover, which is plastic. So it kind of is an insulator. It also is a bracket that wraps around to this little angled piece that goes around the muffler with just a clamp, hose clamp style clamp, and it kind of sandwiches this bracket, which is attached by all of these, all these little, uh, basically spacers, they're brackets for these, they're tapped, and then they thread into the case of the engine. So that's pretty solid as well. This kit is super complete and comes with a lot of stuff. It gets your engine in there and you don't have to worry about any 
anything not lining up and you don't have to worry about making anything yourself it all pretty much bolts together and you put it in there now your wiring harness you can see that big gray connector and there's an also a brown one right under it them two and also that one those are the connectors that separate the engine wiring harness which is the idle stabilizer throttle position uh, map sensor and camshaft sensor which is down there crankshaft sensor which is in there all the fuel injectors and I'm trying to think anything else the purge solenoids that is all on the engine knock sensor that's all on the engine and it disconnects right there on that connector well them three connectors there's three of them so once you disconnect that out of your Subaru car you can take the engine out and this is all you don't have to touch any of this this is all stock Subaru and you don't have to mess with any of it the only part that you have to mess with is from here to your ECU that's the only part that is kind of complex and there's a lot of extra wires because the Subarus use the ECU to power a lot of the body stuff on the car on the Subarus so you have to eliminate all the stuff that is in the body in order to just make this engine run and some of that stuff you have to mimic because it wants a signal from them certain particular sensors for example the fuel level the fuel temperature there's also the cooling fans it wants to see 12 volt from the cooling fans and you have to mimic that in order for it to run the engine without throwing a ton of codes so here's my ecu setup my battery's kind of in my way but you can see the ecu right there 2002 forcer auto ej251 is the engine i used two relays in order to keep the voltage consistent for the fuel temperature and the fuel level sensor and that eliminates the codes that kept popping up on my diagnostic my check engine light so i also have a diagnostic connector right there that you can just flip up and you can see it right there i got my main relay fuel pump relay right there i forget what the other one is ecu relay maybe and i have the connectors down there which are factory they're under the panel the floor pan and the passenger side so i just left them there and i got a super nice setup which took me a long time in order to get this nice i bolted this to the stock to the stock ecu like housing and i got switched power here and i got constant power here i did a pretty decent job with it all it took a long time in order to get it this nice but it just depends on how much time you want to take in order to get your van looking nice also small car has that little instrument panel it's an aftermarket one that replicates the original Volkswagen with the turn signals battery high beams and oil pressure they also have a check engine light which I was able to hook up to my ECU and actually right here when I turn the key on it comes on and when I start it up it turns off because I have no code right now that's super nice it's just one little added touch to complete your engine transplant and it makes it super easy to kind of keep an eye on the ECU and the whole engine and everything to make sure it's running right I also added another another connector under there which I can connect to and it's up front so it's technically illegal which doesn't really matter if I get ever get a check engine light I can hook my little sensor up to it and check that through my phone here is my oil pressure and also coolant coolant temp right here I really like these because it's a live reading it's like a live value of you know your coolant temp and your oil pressure and it just it's just another added touch of security when you're driving you know you physically know that you have oil pressure and you have coolant and also I can tell by how much oil pressure is in here if my oil is low 
I can I can tell on running on the highway if it's a little bit down I need a little bit of oil so this is something I added it is a little oil splitter from 42 draft designs and it's for a, an mk4 vr6 and that I got going down to the stock oil pressure switch which is this so this it comes up here through this hose and goes to this digital it's like a signal it provides a signal for that gauge I have up there the oil pressure gauge and this goes to the ECU this goes to another gauge that I have there which is just kind of for show but it does work so that's how I got the oil pressure going to my dash and also I got another uh, coolant temperature it's not this one but it's another one that's on kind of the other side and it's super hard to get to so I'm not gonna point that out but that provides a live reading of the temperature and there's no questions on how hot the engine is and how much oil pressure the engine has I also did the small car oil dipstick relocator because the stock one comes right up here I think it uses that little M6 bolt right there uses that and it comes up and it's just a yellow you can pull it and it's right next to the fill and you can't access that when the van is loaded up with stuff and you have all your gear inside the van and you're at the gas station and you want to check so it's, it's down here and that's it right there and you just pull that out just like the factory and you can check your oil level with this small car dipstick relocator which I haven't had a problem with it's pretty sweet it's a stainless steel braided line and it comes with a little bracket that's actually starting to rust up I made a spacer right here for it so it's pretty nice I would do it again I think it's like 70 bucks maybe so I ended up getting that as well just just again bring it back to factory spec and you can check the oil with your gear all in there highly 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 recommend the stock Subaru airbox it was a pain to get in here and it was hard to make it fit and I had to cut a bunch off the bottom but it looks way nicer than what uh, filter they included with the Rocky Mountain Westy kit because it was just like a cone filter right here and it didn't look the best it kind of looked unfinished so I was able to get some silicone couplings and attach this thing from the throttle body over to the airbox. And I also have a hose running up from the other side of the airbox up here into this. There's like a little um, intake right there. And it's, it's a cold air intake. It gets air from outside. So that... I really really like and I really appreciate when someone puts the time and effort into making their stock Subaru airbox work with their conversion just because it looks better it just looks nice it looks stock it looks like a factory airbox because it is so I like that it's kind of hard to replace the air filter but it's worth it to me because it just looks so nice power steering you can use the stock Subaru power steering pump some of them are different they have a remote reservoir this one has the older style which is right on top of the power steering pump it's just bolted on top and the fittings are different the rocky mountain westy power steering adapter power steering line adapter that goes from right here comes around goes into a, this flex line and then it bolts up right here is where it goes to the original volkswagen lines so that's another thing you have to do if your van has power steering. If not, you don't even have to worry about it. You can take this whole thing off. And that I got from Rocky Mountain Westy. Haven't had a problem with it. It's always worked. It looks decent. It's, you know, it's a power steering line that I've never had to think about again. AC goes right here. You can see them big threaded holes. And there's also threaded holes right there. And there's another one there. That's where it bolts. It also goes on the back side. It goes on the back side of that pulley on the crankshaft and it comes up and then you know the pulley goes around the compressor my van used to have AC you can tell my lines and back here 
that all started falling down and cracking and it was just terrible. I had to go. So I don't have AC in my van, but you can make it work. You can have the Subaru compressor run the Volkswagen AC. A lot of people do it and they say it works good. I'm sure you probably have to get lines. You have to do some research and find out where to get them. But people do do it and they keep the factory AC there. Okay guys, I'm looking through this manual that I got with mine. And the speed sensor is another thing that you're gonna have to either buy from a vendor, like an aftermarket kind of thing, or you can make them yourself. A lot of people do that. There's a bunch of info on the Samba about this. And basically you bolt it around the flange on your CV joint and then you mount it on the transmission with the bracket that they give you. And when it's all hooked up, it passes by a little, the little teeth right there and it passes by them and it simulates a speed sensor for the ECU. And it's able to know that your van is moving. So that's another thing you gotta think about. Pretty much all the ECUs require a speed sensor in order for it to know that the vehicle's moving. So these aren't that much or you can make them yourself for a lot cheaper. I highly recommend getting that for your Subaru swap. So this manual is pretty good. They got an introduction here. They got a tool list of all the stuff you need. They got materials, materials, and more materials, oil pump priming. They go over a lot of stuff, pretty much the whole process. And some of the stuff that they sell is in here that you may not get. So it might be a little bit different, but a lot of it is in here, which is kind of nice when you buy the whole kit because they kind of walk you through the whole process that they set up, which is very, very complete. It's probably one of the most complete Subaru kits out there. So that's up to you. You can piece your own together, which isn't that bad, or you can buy one, which I did. It's kind of a little bit easier if you have the money to spend. Other than that, this is a pretty basic conversion that almost anyone could do as long as you have a little bit of mechanical ability. I wouldn't be scared to do this. They run super smooth. There's a lot of room. You can see the ground. There's a lot of room with these kits, with these Subaru engines, and they're readily available. All the parts are readily available. The engines are readily available. So it's just a super sweet engine kit that you can buy and convert your van into something that you can trust. I'm gonna start this thing up real quick and show you guys how it sounds like. So you can tell this was running on the high idle when I first started it. And it'll come down here in a second, just like a regular car bone. So this is idle at operating temp. That's a Subaru. I don't know what else to say, other than how sweet they run. 